I'm Morgan from the Very Unofficial Travel Guides. Welcome back to my little channel here on YouTube. Last week I showed you around the Sheraton Grand, formerly known as the Sheraton, which is where we stayed when we were in Chicago. And today I want to show you everything we learned about in the boring, tiny Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. I mean, seriously, all we really learned about was... Science! Science! Industry! Science! Industry! Poop! This! Spiders! Robots! A princess! Poop! Star Trek! This! A tornado! Coffee! DNA! Is that thing? That thing? Worms! Baby birdies! A miniature city! The Earth! Bicycles! A gigantic pinball machine! A tractor! Cow butts! Corn! Barbie dolls! Planes! Trains! Automobiles! A virtual embryo! Fairy castle! These guys and an entire submarine. Okay, but now really seriously? That place is gigantic. And just like the Magic Kingdom at Disney World, there really is no practical way that you're ever gonna see everything in one day. Unless you wanna run around a lot and probably go a little bit crazy. Here's some tips for your visit. First of all, you don't need to wait in the big long line at the ticket counter. Across the entrance hall, there are do-it-yourself ticket machines with ginormous touch screens and a very self-explanatory process. The basic ticket with no extra tours or experiences cost us $18 in the summer of 2016. Once you've got your ticket, you can proceed right up the escalator into the madness that is the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. Like I said, it is absolutely gigantic and there really is no way to like spend time with every single exhibit. And so my tip for you is don't try to do that. Check out the website before you go and pick like two or three of the big experiences like for instance the coal mine, the hall of transportation, and the U-boat submarine. Oh the submarine exhibit, it is so cool. Pick like two or three experiences that are really interesting to you and then when you get there try to first just focus on seeing those things. I'm pretty glad I've never seen a hole this big on the side of a plane before. <laughs> If after you've seen those specific things that really interest you and you've still got some time left, then, you know, wander around and look at the other things and I'm sure you're gonna find something else that's interesting to you. I mean, how could you not? I think a mistake a lot of people make when they go here is they just don't realize how huge it is. And they walk in, go up the escalator, go to one of the first exhibits, and then they start reading the, the info boards about every single thing and wait for everything to, every event to happen. And it's just so much. And then they end up spending time on things that they maybe, you know, think is cool, but aren't like specifically interested in. And then later in the day when they're totally like because they've seen so much already, then they realize that there's something that they like are really into, you know, like in this intricate fairy tale castle in the basement or a live show about poop. Yes, poop. Anyways, if you're planning a visit, remember that the museum is not directly in the touristy part of the city, so plan a while to get down there and back. And if you're gonna have less than three hours to spend there once you get there, you might wanna just consider doing something else. I'm Morgan from the Very Unofficial Travel Guides and it would make me really happy if you would press that thumbs up button down below the video and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and you can also support me on Patreon. I'll be back next week with some more fun travel-related stuff for you. See you later.